The Spurs have played the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight, looking for their first win in some two and a half weeks. On November 11th, they beat the Bucks 111 to 93, and since then they've lost eight games in a row, dropping to six and 15, and 14th in the Western Conference, just one half game ahead of the last place Rockets. Heading into this matchup tonight, the Spurs are two and 13 against conference opponents, and one and one in games decided by three points or fewer. For Spurs fourth year power forward Isaiah Roby tonight is a homecoming for him because he spent his first three seasons in the NBA with the Thunder. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of my old teammates are still there. Obviously, um, you know, looking forward to playing against those guys. You know, Shea's playing really well lately, so you know that's a challenge. I'm looking forward to you know taking on as a team. And um, other than that, just seeing the people around the stadium. You know, uh, we spent so much time with them and the, you know the workers at the stadium and whatnot. And um, so it'll be cool to see those people again. Thunder will host the Spurs tonight at 7, and OKC is favored by 5 points. Mavs point guard Luka Doncic put on a show in Dallas last night, leading the Mavs past the Golden State Warriors. He scored 41 points to go with 12 assists and 12 rebounds for his NBA-leading fifth triple-double this season. He shot 14-27 overall and 4 for 9 from three-point range. Dallas held off the Warriors 116-113 to end a four-game losing streak, the longest in two seasons under head coach Jason Kidd. UTSA Roadrunners have had to make adjustments all season long due to several injuries. Head coach Jeff Trailer said this season has been both rewarding and frustrating at the same time. Among the injuries, running back Brendan Brady, who went down in the 34-31 comeback victory against UTEP this past weekend. As a result, Trailer has named Kavorian Barnes as his starting running back in Friday's Conference USA Championship game against North Texas. Brady has played in all 12 games this season with almost 700 yards rushing and nine touchdowns. Now the redshirt freshman who has 538 yards and five touchdowns will be the number one back against the mean green. Do what I can do, you know. Uh, Brendan Brady, he really put it on the platter for him, you know. I, I'm, I'm going to miss him, you know. I really hate he's not going to be able to play, but it's time for the next man to step up. And so I feel like I'm the next man. And then we got, we got other running backs in the room that's going to be ready to step up as well. So I feel like us in the running back room, we'll be perfectly fine. It's just the standard is the standard, and there's no gray area in that. Following practice yesterday, Coach Trailer continued his appeal to the city to have 50,000 or more fans in the stands for Friday night's game. Morale of the troops right now are huge. It's been a long year. It's been a tough year. And uh, all that stuff really matters. Or I wouldn't be basically begging our crowd to try to hit 50. You know, I, you know, I really think we could hit 50. The UTSA attendance record in the Dome is 56,743 in the Roadrunners' first ever game in September of 2011. So here's the matchup, UNT, UTSA, Friday night 6.30 at the Alamo Dome. I think the mayor was even on our newscast yesterday at 6, asking people to come on down. Right, yeah, man, let's go. Let's pack yeah. the Dome. Yeah, because it just doesn't help this team, it helps the city. Because yes. It puts us on a higher plane for, Absolutely. for more athletic events. To We've got the room. Yeah. We've got the seats. All right, new to date five. They're the kind of person that loves adventure, experiences, and exploring. They're travelers, but buying the right gift can be a challenge. We have some gift ideas that will not break the bank, and you get to get on Santa's nice list. It's to date five after Entertainment Tonight. Congress says it's stepping in to prevent a string, a, rather a strike among U.S. rail workers. That potential strike could be a devastating blow, though, to the nation's economy because shipping of fuel, food and other critical goods will be disrupted. Speaker Nancy Pelosi says that the House will act today, though, on two separate bills. The first bill would adopt the tentative agreement between September, which was negotiated by labor leaders and railroad companies. The second vote is going to be to add seven days of paid sick leave for railroad workers to the agreement. It's a major sticking point for labor leaders. The unions have threatened to strike if they can't get an agreement reached before December 9th deadline. Spain's government says there was an explosion at Ukraine's embassy in Madrid today. An employee handling a letter was slightly injured and is being treated at a hospital. In response, Ukraine has ramped up security at all of its embassies. Ukraine's foreign ministry says whoever is behind the explosion will not intimidate Ukraine diplomats or stop their daily work to strengthen Ukraine and counter Russian aggression. Spain, which is a NATO country, has sent military equipment to Ukraine to help its armed forces fight Russians' invasion. 
An ironic development leading police to a charge of a man with a double murder case in Indiana. The case back in 2017 when two teenage girls were found. ABC's Alex Perez reports the suspect in the case was living just two miles from the crime scene. It took five years of police work to find him. New details in the mysterious murders of two young girls in Delphi, Indiana. A judge Tuesday defying prosecutors' requests and unsealing court documents, revealing some of what led police to charge Richard Allen with the 2017 killings of Libby German and Abby Williams. He's been charged with two counts of murder. According to the probable cause affidavit obtained by ABC News, investigators believe Allen is the man seen in this video recovered from Libby's cell phone and say the full video shows the man allegedly following the eighth graders on a bridge. One of the girls says gun. Then police say you hear the suspect's voice. <laughs> Authorities say the girls do walk down a hill before the video ends. The affidavit also stating Libby and Abby's clothes were located in a nearby creek. And that when investigators carried out a search warrant at Allen's home, they seized boots, knives, and a 40 caliber gun that tests showed matched an unspent bullet found between the girls' remains. Their exact cause of death remains unclear. Everybody's going to keep them in their minds forever. According to that newly unsealed information, multiple witnesses placed a man resembling Allen near the Manan High Bridge where he allegedly encountered the girls just after 2 p.m. About two hours later, one woman told police she drove by a man on the side of the road who was wearing a blue colored jacket, blue jeans, and was muddy and bloody. Allen's wife, the document says, confirming to authorities he owns a similar jacket. 50-year-old Allen, who was charged last month, nearly six years after the murders, living about two miles from the crime scene and working at the local CVS. Libby German's heartbroken family still in disbelief. You know, it's hard. How can somebody do that and then just go on living life like nothing happened? I, I don't understand. Probably never will understand that. Prosecutors believe there may be others linked to the crime. If any other person had any involvement in these murders in any way, that person or persons will be held accountable. Allen has pleaded not guilty in that affidavit. He told police he was on the trail during the time of the murders, but denied any involvement. He also could not explain to investigators why a bullet from his gun was found at the scene, only telling police he did not allow anyone to use or borrow his weapon. That was ABC's Alex Pettis reporting. Allen is being held without bail. He is due back in court in February. One of the survivors of the mass shooting inside a Virginia Walmart is suing the company. She says that the retail giant knew there were complaints about the alleged gunman, but didn't do anything about it. In the $50 million lawsuit, Donya Prelu Wal accuses Walmart of negligence. She claims the company knew the alleged shooter had, quote, known propensities for violence, threats, and strange behavior, end quote. However, Walmart continued to employ him. Prelu was in the break room when Andre Bing, a store manager, allegedly opened fire last week, killing six people. Prelu was on the phone with her mother at the time. All of a sudden, I hear like these shots, like a pop, pop, pop. She's saying he's killing everybody and I know he's going to be after me. I'm next. Prelo says she submitted a formal complaint about Bing. Her mother also complained to the management. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Another view of this pretty day. You can't really see, but it's been a little bit windy this morning and that's going to die down. Right? Yeah, those winds will eventually calm this evening. We'll get rid of some of those wind gusts, I think, by tonight. Uh, one thing we have to be concerned with this time of year is we start to get these fronts and gusty winds. What does that do to the allergens? And I know that these are two words you don't want to hear, mountain and cedar. But uh, as we get into December, it becomes cedar season. And that typically peaks in January. So uh, as of now, we do not have any mountain cedar in the pollen count. We'll keep you posted when it does show up for the first time, and that can be really any time here in December. As we look at the pollen count for today, it's just molds and juniper, 850. Moderate for molds, juniper is low at 20. 53 in Bandera, 52 Bernie Stage, 52 Canyon Lake, 55 Converse, 57 down in Stinson. In the forecast today, 
we're around 60 by 4 o'clock. That's our high temperature. Those northeasterly winds is are so alluded to does uh, they do die down by tonight. 55 at 6 o'clock down to 47 at 10 p.m. And it will be another chilly start tomorrow. Also, we'll be looking at some clouds that will be working their way in by uh, by morning time tomorrow. We'll let you know what that means for our forecast and when our next rain chance will be. That's coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. The founders of the far right militia, the founder himself the, of the Oath Keepers, facing decades in prison after a federal jury found him guilty of seditious conspiracy in the January 6th Capitol attack. As ABC's Faith of Bube reports, other members of the group also convicted. Nearly two years after a mob of Donald Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol in this bloody attack. <laughs> A federal jury handing down a guilty verdict for the most serious charge prosecutors have yet brought against January 6 perpetrators. Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the far right militia, the Oath Keepers, and his top lieutenant, Kelly Meggs, convicted of seditious conspiracy, a rare Civil War era charge that carries a maximum of 20 years in prison. Prosecutors convincing the jury that the Capitol attack was an organized conspiracy against the U.S. government. We have men already stationed outside D.C. as a nuclear option. In case they attempt to remove the president illegally, we will step in and stop it. The Justice Department using videos and text messages to show that Rhodes and other members of the Oath Keepers were willing to use violence to illegally keep former President Donald Trump in power. In one text message, Rhodes writing, quote, we aren't getting through this without a civil war. And then on December 11th, another message, quote, it'll be a bloody and desperate fight. But on the witness stand, Rhodes and other Oath Keepers suggesting that their comments were all bluster. The jury not convinced, instead finding Rhodes, Megs, and three other defendants guilty of multiple charges. Rhodes that, attorney, um, Ed Tarpley. Uh, we presented a case which uh, showed through evidence and testimony that uh, Mr. Rhodes did not commit the crime of seditious conspiracy. And the defense attorneys point out that not all the charges prosecutors sought in this case ended in guilty verdict. They do, however, plan to appeal the convictions. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. The Spurs are on the road tonight. A quick trip to Oklahoma City. They had a chance to practice yesterday, so we're going to see if that'll pay off. We'll hear from a couple of the stars on take advantage of that practice time. Tom Hanks serving those who serve. The Oscar-winning actor has launched a consumer products company called Hanks for Our Troops, with all of the profits going to veterans and military families. It's starting with three coffee varieties, Tom's Magic Morning Blend, First Class Joe, and a seasonal blend, Sergeant Peppermint. You can find more information at Give Hanks. That's hanks-a-n-x.com. That's pretty cool. I like that. I need a cup of joe these days, huh? Well, you know, I'm, I, I feel as though the weather forecast not only changes every day for every day, but from day to day. Because Saturday was looking kind of nice and warm. Now it's not so much. That's changed because we had a frontal battery that was going to go into get right to our doorstep and stop. Now it looks like it comes through. So, yes, uh, it is changing day to day. And... Uh, we'll have a lot of temperature fluctuation going forward. 56 so far today, 43 was the low this morning. It's been overall a pretty chilly day. We'll be below average. The records are 85 and 22. That 22 set back in 1976. We look at the weekend forecast. Plus, we talk about the end of hurricane season coming up. Beautiful outside, a little windy, so if you got those yard ornaments, you might want to make sure they're tied down, because I'm sure last night's wind event is not going to be the first one we have before Christmas. So I got all my ornaments up this morning. Everything was still in place. Very lucky. Ooh. Okay, good. Very lucky. Yeah, the, the wreath on our door, I could hear it, you know, Rattling. shaking the wind, but it, it, stayed, <laughs> it stayed intact, so we're good there. Uh, it has been windy. Those winds do calm down, thankfully, a little bit later this evening and tonight. Want to talk real quick about the end of hurricane season. That is today. It was a Busy season, but not that busy, especially when you compare it to the forecast. We did see Nicole, by the way, so that should be marked out. So we uh, didn't get past Nicole, though. Owen, Paula, Richard, uh, they'll get put on some lists down the line. And, and all in all, it wasn't that bad of a year, with the exception of Ian, if you remember that. Did do a lot of damage in Florida. But the season comes to an end, and there's uh, nothing out there right now. Now, yesterday was a busy day across the southeast. This was what the radar looked like then. 
These are all the tornado reports, and there were a lot of them across parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. In fact, 30 in total. Unfortunately, there were two fatalities in Alabama. There was also a lot of wind and hail damage, and there was some severe weather in Florida today as this storm system progressed east. So uh, it looks like the severe weather threat is winding down, but it was a busy day yesterday, and we were fearing that there would be quite a few storms, and indeed there were. Uh, as we go outside here, it is uh, nothing but blue skies and gorgeous. 55 degrees at the airport, 57 cents and 55, Kelly 55 at Randolph. And the winds are still up there, north northeasterly at about a 14. But these numbers, as I said, will begin to come down later this afternoon. As you look across the state, it was 18 in Amarillo this morning. Now up to 35, still pretty chilly up there. 35 Lubbock, 41 Wichita Falls. This cold air mass has settled in. Won't be here for that long. But uh, we will get a couple more fronts that will just sort of reinforce some cool air in the coming days. 55 New Braunfels, 55 at Randolph, 59 closing in on 60 down there in Pleasanton. And we should see several spots hit 60 today. Uh, the Futurecast winds by midnight. Yeah, they're down in the 5 to 15 mile per hour range down from that 10 to 20 mile per hour and gusty wind speed. And as we look at the big picture here with the water vapor, it gives us a good idea of what's going on. So that last storm system pushes away. There's a push of dry air behind that, but now we're starting to see some upper level moisture spread in. And really the pattern is such that a lot of the main energy is moving to our north. And so that means our rain chances aren't that great, but these pieces of energy that do move through help to push these cold fronts down. So really that's all we have to work with are these fronts and they're not going to generate all that much rain. So a little closer look here at Texas. There are some clouds building down to the south across deep south Texas, Texas, and eventually those clouds will surge back north and will be cloudy tomorrow here. So this afternoon, sunny, but by midnight, we start to see those clouds building out west. It becomes cloudy in places like Del Rio and Eagle Pass. And then by tomorrow morning, it starts to cloud up pretty quickly. Uh, this is around 7 o'clock, and this shows the temperature. Some 30s for the hill country will be around 42 here in San Antonio, 46 in Pearsall, 43 Pleasanton. And then clouds stick around all day long. It'll be a gray day. That'll keep temperatures in check. I doubt we get out of the mid 50s here in town. Uh, so a somewhat chilly day, especially with the lack of sun. And then we've got to start to add in some rain chances Friday morning, about a 30% chance. But don't get too excited because this is mainly just a very light shower activity or drizzle. So it's not going to account for much in the rain gauges. 53 tomorrow, 68 Friday. 59 on Saturday, that's an upside down day. We start off in the 60s, probably end up in the 50s with our next front. 64 Sunday, still a small chance of rain, mostly cloudy skies, and then warmer next week. We'll be right back. After getting beaten back-to-back -back games at home by the Lakers, the Spurs took Sunday and Monday off to regroup. Then the Silver and Black went back to work yesterday to see if they could find a way to snap out of their eight-game losing streak when they traveled to OKC to face the Thunder tonight. Yesterday's workout took about an hour, but even with the work, they'll still be shorthanded tonight with both Jakob Pertl and Jeremy Sohan out with quad injuries. On Monday, Pop took the team to see the movie Till, another chance to bond and learn outside of basketball. Just whenever you can spend time together and learn a lot about what's gone on in our country. Uh, you know, obviously Pop is, uh, he informs us a lot on things that are going on just outside of basketball. And I think that's more important than what's going on on the floor, you know. And uh, you know, I thought just being together as a team, being able to reflect on it. And, uh, you know, we took the bus over as a team. So it was just a cool day. It felt like a field trip. <laughs> Thunder will host the Spurs tonight at 7, the first of three regular season meetings between the two sides. The University of the Incarnate Word Cardinals will kick off the FCS playoffs as the seventh seeded team when they host 10 2 Furman after Furman defeated Elon 31 6, while the back to back Southland Conference champs enjoyed a bye week. Quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. will lead one of the highest scoring offenses in the nation after throwing 50 touchdown passes during the regular season. So, how does he maintain his focus knowing he's getting national attention? Being an older guy, like I've seen a lot of football. Um, I've seen a lot of other guys, you know, when I was young, um, you know, handle success and, and handle it the right way. Um, and, you know, I, I've learned from those guys. Um, you know, I, I go through every week. My motto is that every week's the same. Um, no matter if you're, you're playing great or playing terribly, you know, uh, you're blessed with another opportunity to play football. Our guys are going to be fired up. That's what I told them. Our guys are going to be fired up. We know that. It's going to come down to the little details, right, the discipline aspect, um, you know, who can control their emotions uh, better. 
Kickoff at Gale and Tom Benson Stadium on Saturday is set for 1 p.m. Team USA forward Christian Pulisic says he will be ready for Saturday's match against the Netherlands after picking up an injury in the USA's Group B win against Iran yesterday. He was involved in a hard collision with Iran's goalkeeper as he tapped in a headed cross for the U.S. and the only goal of the match. Pulisic, who suffered a pelvic contusion, said in a social media post that he would be ready Saturday. Don't worry. And you know, he means a lot to the red, white, and blue. He brings a lot to the team, a uh, great guy off the field, very good, nice guy. And then on the field, uh, everyone, everyone sees his brilliance. Um, he's there at the right time, at the right space. <laughs> so, I mean, um, no, very, very happy that uh, he's my teammate, very happy. I um, always get to learn from him and he's a great, great guy. The U.S. and the Netherlands will square off Saturday morning at 9 local time in the knockout stage. Ooh, great way to start a Saturday. Yeah. I often wonder if Pop took the media on one of his field trips where he would take us. That's cool. We need to have Pop take a media. Yeah, let's set that up. Yeah. That'd be kind of fun. Be interesting to see where we end up. <laughs> All right, we're ending up at SA Live. Market Square, how's it He's going, counting. guys? He's counting One, the money oh, because, you know, money. extra Two, cash is three, always great going into four, the holidays, right? $500. <laughs> you can win that today, by the way. <laughs> we're going to tell you how. Oh, it and is tamale season. It sure is. And Chef Just Kirk, executive chef at Ocho and owner of Milpa, is here. And you have a way to make the recipe lighter? Yeah, so we got a little bit of tip for the holidays and how to not discard of your tomatillo husk so you can eventually use it as a leavener for your tamal dough. Interesting. So to make these little tamales a little bit lighter or perhaps the three pound tamale that can be shared by two a little bit lighter or maybe it'll make the 15 pound tamale a little bit lighter. Yeah, we're going to get that baby out of here and see if we can put a dent in it. And, you know, this may look like dessert, mm. but take a closer look. Smells like mm -hmm. it. That's so, yes, Organically Bath and Beauty is going to be here with some great little gift ideas for you. And Jen checked out a fun Christmas experience. Whoville has taken over Otro Bar here in the heart of downtown San Antonio. Today we get a sample of the menu and what you can expect when you come take in this beautiful rooftop setting. And take your makeup looks, of course, from, you know, kind of every day mm -hmm. to glam. Yes, look at that right there. We've got the pros here to show you how to sparkle and shine this season. And a great market to do a little bit of shopping over there, sheer celebrations. Boy, it's a packed show today. Yes, it is. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. Right now on KZO.com, the latest on the fundraising efforts for No Shave November. We are making it happen. Ooh, so far, we still have a few hours left. We've raised more than $26,000. You can find the links to donate on our website. And here's a look at the leaderboard. Uh-oh, Mike Osterhage just beat out uh -oh. Justin Horn. How much is the difference there? Ooh, Thank Justin. You. About 200 bucks. 200 bucks. Not you can still do it, Justin. They are neck and neck. All right. I'm at fifth. I'll take that. Once again, thank you all for donating. We're number one in the nation. Yes, that's number one. Good. We're making so, everybody else yeah. look bad. But on all this money, every dollar going to cancer research. Incredible, <laughs> incredible. Hey, you know, I mean, South Texas always, always shows up, and we we sure do appreciate it. Uh, 60 degrees today. The winds do die down. 53 and cloudy tomorrow. So it's sunny today. Know that it will be cloudy and actually cooler tomorrow. Uh, 68 Friday with some showers early. Another chance for a few light showers Saturday and Sunday with another front Saturday. So a lot of temperature variation there in seven day forecast. Just keep the jacket in the car so you have it with you all week long, guys. Thank you, Justin. Do you think that Justin and Mike's wives are like at home <laughs> with their credit cards ready <laughs> to? Probably. You know? Well, and Mike's got all that cash in his hand. I want to that, to uh, wait that a in. minute, you're right. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm not sure about all that. Fiona, keep an eye on that, all right? <laughs> Actually, live starts right now. Today on SA Live, it's tamale season, and you've seen the traditional one. Wait till you see the 15 pound one in there and how you can order it for the holidays. The Grinch has taken over Otro Bar. We're here in the heart of downtown San Antonio getting a sample of the menu. Now, not only does it include some fun, festive drinks, but also some delicious food to take in. We'll show you and tell you all about it. And don't worry, be happy. Yep, we got bunnies in the studio. How are you going to adopt one or help this local rescue? That's all coming up today on SA Live. 
Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Oh, you know, it's going to be a good day when we've got a plate of tamale or just a 15 pound tamale. Yes, that is one giant tamale right there. Or maybe a tamale built for two that you can share in a romantic dinner. We're going to tell you all about that. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Oster. Hey, what are you doing? Hold on, I'm, I'm donating. No shave? Yeah. Oh, thank you. No, 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 I'm donating for Justin. <laughs> Well, he needs the help because I have Team Gray here. The Silver Fox is behind me. Keep donating, folks. Cement that that number one spot. No, but the team effort. We're like $25,000 yeah. more than that for the whole KSAT team. So thank you all yes. very, very much for that. Oh, well, he is the Silver Fox, Mike Osterhage, and I am Fiona Gorsi. Delete. Oh, hey! <laughs> if you're not eating tamales during the month of December, I mean, come on, how, how are you not? So, wait, big question though, what is your favorite tamale filling? Go. Um, okay, pork yeah. or cream cheese. I kind of like, I, I pulled a U right there, I said two things. That's okay, because okay, they're, they're both delicious. Okay. I'm going to go with the pork, and, and it, to me, if the, the juice is not running mm -hmm. down your hands and your face, yeah, then you're doing something wrong, because I mean, if you, if the, oh, yes, oh, yes. good, yes, mm -hmm. hi. Yes. So Hi. tamale season. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. And if you're not eating tamales, of course, during the month of December, do you even live here in San Antonio? They are a tradition for just about everybody here in South Texas. And if you made them, you know they are a lot of work. Chef Jess Kirk, executive chef at Ocho and owner of Milpa, is here to share some tips to make the process a little easier and tell us a little bit about the history of tamale. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me today. Okay. <laughs> I have never, ever in my life seen... Yeah, let's address the... You know, okay. great thing. So Milpa started off with just myself, labor intensive, but I have some great parents that inspired me also at San Luis Potosí. One of them raised over there, the other one in Guanajuato. And then me with the love of Oaxaca, I was like, why not combine this inspiration from all of them and get the Sacogil tamal, tamal from San Luis Potosí, uh -huh. the Oaxaca tamal, and the tamal from Guanajuato, and make one big massive tamal to celebrate with the family. And wow. if, if you want to have a party, you can order something like you that, right? You can definitely order something like this. Well, we're, we're actually going to be taking orders during the holidays starting December 7th, and we're only going to take limited amounts, so please put in your order. And of course, we're going to be serving these up during the holidays. Come and pick yours up. So, so, and this is part of the tamal event? This is going to be part Part of the Milpa event okay, okay. and of course I'm the chef for two different locations one being Ocho and I'm also the owner for Milpa which is inspired by my mom Aww. but and what's that stuffed with this one's gonna be stuffed with chicken mole mole Ooh. poblano Aww. to be exact you know we can even too. I've been wanting to oh my oh. God. if you haven't seen this oh. look at that Look at oh, how beautiful that wow. is. Isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness and gracious. And it smells, I mean, I wish everybody could smell through the TV. It just Imagine smells. Imagine having a Christmas party and that is at the center of mm -hmm. your table. Or if you'd like something a little more intimate, how about a, this is a three pounder? This is gonna be a three pound tamal. And this is absolutely what got things started actually. Mm -hmm. um, this one's one of the first things as a chef that I created that I felt really, really just my own. And now we host a dinner every year at Ocho, which is gonna be uh, the hotel in Hotel to Havana yes. and you get to it has carnita, salsa guajillo, everything in there and you can top it off with all your toppings, corn, pickled onions, queso fresco, even crema. Okay. Um, and to be honest, that's actually my mom's salsa over there. She made it especially for you all, the green salsa right there. Oh, oh really? man, yeah. She so, knew you were, she, we were going to be on TV. She's like, let me send you the salsa from Laredo. Like, thank got you. you. Thank you, mom. <laughs> yes. So yeah, so this, during this weekend, we're going to be uh, Christmas weekend, we're gonna be serving this big three pound tamal. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're wanting to come in with your family, this is definitely shareable. You can set it up yourself. We're gonna have a, a choice between chicken, pork, and our vegetarian calabaza. Ooh. Isn't that, oh my God, that looks oh, great. Now, Look that. In, the, in the teas you were talking about, a way to make the, the masa a little lighter. bit lighter. Yeah, so great tip that my mom passed down to me. You know, mm -hmm. my mom's always been like, you know, my tamales, my tamales, everybody wants my tamales. And I would see it, it was, I, I saw it. I was like, what is so different about hers so once I sat down with her and I kind of like got the history of like how she was shown she actually showed me that tomatillo husk you know in your broth to make that tamal, the masa, would help as a leavener for your masa. So you get that sponginess, that doughness, that, that nice spring to it and you can tell I mean I'm honestly showing proof right here wow. like it is delicious honestly so save those husk. Okay that's a great little, that's a great little tip so um, if you were to oh Yes. Yeah, please. Oh, thank you. Look, oh, try out this mole right here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here I mean, you here can pour it. Oh, oh, yes. Let me get you okay. on there. 
And so tell us about Milpa, what else do you serve? Uh, Milpa actually, uh, Milpa is specialized in overlooked street food. So one of the main things that I have there is tacos árabes. Born from Puebla, okay. sister to the Al, Pas Al Pastor, mm -hmm. but we make it ourselves our own Milpa way, such as this tamal, it's the Milpa way. So Al Pastor is the sister to the Arabes, and we brought in the Arabes to showcase in San Antonio, and it's become a sensation just across Texas. So. That mole sauce, mm -hmm. oh my goodness gracious. Thank How long you. does it take to make that? Because yeah. that sounds you like, know, or tastes like it was yeah. It was just there for hours and hours. You know, these cazuelas definitely help me create the mole. Um, you know, keep me outside for hours on end, mm. just kind of like anywhere between three to eight hours, depending. Some of them can take up to 12 hours if you're trying to use a mother mole and bring it up and then kind of nourish it from there. So there's so many techniques. So this one actually took us about four hours. We, pay, we paid more attention to the tamal. Mm -hmm. And of course, just kind of built the mole depending on just the, the, the ingredients that we had in house. So, oh mm. my gosh! And okay. the tamale and fest, a little bit more on that. The tamale. The tamale festival. I'm sorry. The tamale festival. Well, the tamale festival that we're gonna have, um, or that we're fiesta that we're gonna have at Ocho, it's actually started off back in 2019, and we've kept it as a tradition every year now since uh, going on three years, and it's something that we just keep evolving in tamale. The evolution of the tamale has come in such a a big throughout the years that we were just kind of going with the trend, going with the evolution, mm -hmm. and what can we bring that's making it our own. So yeah. Mm. Oh, golly, Chef Jess Kirk, thank you so much for more You're information thank you so on Milpa and Ocho. Just head to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the As Seen on Essay Live tab. Mm. Oh, right. I'm happy now. I know. Okay. All right. If you are like everyone down in Whoville who liked Christmas a lot. <laughs> yes. Or are you like the Grinch north of Whoville? Who did not? Either way, whether you're a Grinch or who, you can enjoy some great Christmas food and a fun Christmas experience right here in downtown. And our Jen Tobias Drusky went to check it out. Whoville has taken over this popular downtown bar and we are getting a taste of the menu. Cheers. Here I am joined by Elias Ivara and thanks for having me back again. Oh no, I, we love to have you here. I'm so glad. Well, so. Whoville has <laughs> taken over, right? Whoville has taken over Otro and we are very, very excited about that. Um, I. Christmas is my favorite time of year, and the fact that we're able to kind of incorporate Whoville, one of the things that, um, you know, the Grinch stole Christmas, that's something that's near and dear to all of our hearts. Yay. And that's something that I, I've always loved, and I'm glad that I'm able to incorporate that, and you know, yes. in adult life. Yes, <laughs> and right, adult life. Speaking of, we have these yes. gorgeous cocktails. Tell me about what's in them. We'll start with this one right so here. This one right here is going to be Max's reindeer treat. Um, the Grinch wouldn't be anything without little Max. So <laughs> this is his reindeer treat. And so it's going to be a little bit of um, bourbon inside of there, some lemon, some honey, mm -hmm. um, and some apple cider. So Ooh. a little bit something that's going to keep you nice and warm. You see oh. that? It's like a nice warm drink. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Oh, no. May I please, sample please. this guy? Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Very good. Oh yeah. Say, I know. Yes. It'll definitely warm you up. Yes, festive <laughs> indeed. And this is really cool. I love this idea right here. Yeah. So this is going to be um, Whoville punch, and mm -hmm. so um, it's going to be a little bit of tequila in there, some lemon, some cranberry, and then um, we have the little ice ball inside of there as well. So. Something that's fun. I mean, I feel like the um, the presentation of it's already fun as it is, and I feel like this is something that everybody's gonna love um, because not only does it look cool, it tastes really good. Yes, <laughs> it's it. so cute. I will. And, and you came up with these ideas, right? Yes, yes. See? I put all these together, and so it's it's been super fun. I've, it seems very creative. How do you come up with these ideas? This is how I. This is my language I speak. So, <laughs> yes. Beautiful, and it adds to the experience. And speaking of the experience, you also have some fun sweets here, yes, right? For people yes. to take it. So we did um, a nice little s'mores board here. Um, so you'll have a little bit of um, little sterno on there, the marshmallows, some Hershey's and stuff like that. Um, I feel like it's going to be something that is super fun. I mean, I feel like you can enjoy this with friends. You can enjoy this yes. on a date. You can, yes. you can just have fun with it. I don't know. It's something um, our <clears throat> executive chef went ahead and put together a holiday menu for us as well. Yes, don't um, mind if I do. Yes. I'm staring at oh, these. Yes. Very and traditional mm, bonuelos. You so, need your bonuelos, uh, right? During you know, the holiday. He, mm -hmm. he loves that. And then oh, um, so good. moving from the sweets to the hearty aspect mm -hmm. of it, we have some tamales that are here mm. um, downstairs. <clears throat> Something that we love is just the uniqueness um, and you know the execution that our chef is able to do. And so he went ahead and made our tacos into a tamale version. Wow. Um, so we have a nice chicken one here, um, a little mm -hmm. bit of lime crema, a little bit of adobo on the side, um, obviously some fresh veggies and such, um, some Fresnos on there that are going to be house made. And then we also have our pork tamale over here. Um, so traditional pork canitas, um, put it into a tamale with a little bit of cabbage on there, um, a little bit of chicharrones, a little bit of lime, and some tomatillo salsa. Um, so this is something that we all worked on um, and he spent a lot of time on this one and so I think that just like I speak cocktails he speaks food mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think he does a really good job at oh, it. <laughs> I don't say I so agree. myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
This menu is available all throughout December, this correct? All through December, yeah. So it's going to so start good. today, mm -hmm. um, and then after that, um, through December, December 31st, and mm -hmm. then we're just oh, we're really excited. We really, really are. I think that um, it's going to be um, our first opportunity to kind of showcase a little bit of a holiday pop-up for us, mm -hmm. and um, we, we're having fun with it. I love it. <laughs> oh, I love that too. Okay, so for those who have never been, what do they need to know if they want to come <clears throat> check it out? So we are open to the public, right? Okay. Um, everybody thinks that since it's in the hotel that it's not, but no. We um, Otro, literally just meaning another. Mm -hmm. um, we want you to come here for one, another one, after dinner, before mm -hmm. dinner, all that fun stuff. I think it's a fun fun little experience that everybody has. So we are um, located in the Canopy Hotel, okay. um, right across from the Aztec, right there on North St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, just come, join us. <laughs> yeah, I love this time of the year. Come take it in here at Otro. And anything else you'd like to add before we get one last sip here? I don't think so. Just come enjoy the Grinch. <laughs> All right. And if you want to keep up with them on social media, you can. Yes, Your handle? Yes, um, Otro S-A-T-X. All right. Well, it's always a good time here. Thank Absolutely. you so well, much. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> yes. Cheers. I'll take one more sip here. For more information, you can head over to SALive.com. Click the As Seen on SA Live tab or scan the QR code that's on your screen. Cheers. Like last. Mm -hmm. And remember, you don't have to be a guest at nope. the hotel to enjoy Otro Bar. Just walk in, head up to the third floor. <laughs> there you go. And you can, of course, enjoy. Yes, All right. Do. Still ahead on SA Live. Making Christmas cookies? Well, it's a piece of cake where you can get the tools to make your holiday baking easier. And we make some fun cookie designs. But first, you don't need to have the oven going 24 hours to get these amazing holiday smells. This local shop is selling all your favorite holiday scents. And hear how they keep growing. That's next on SA Live.